So basically, we've been in collaborative teams now for a couple of years. This group particularly, at least a year, right? Mm -hmm. full year. So this was just kind of some research to kind of figure out how we could improve over this year into 2020 that I thought we could go through. Basically, as teachers, professional development is something that we think we don't need until we actually do need it. Um, the needs of our students are always changing. Obviously, we know technology is going by faster than ever before, and we must model learning for our students. I think that's the number one reason that we need to be learning, just simply because it models it for our students. Just, um, just a, a little background of for myself in professional development. Basically, didn't have any until I came here for about eight solid years zero professional development offered in my school. And until I had to go dry without any, I don't think I really appreciated it. So I think that's one reason I do feel that it's important to collaborate and try to learn ourselves. So professional learning communities, from all things, professional learning communities, a resource that I had, an ongoing process in which educators work collaboratively in recurring cycles, of collective inquiry and action research to achieve best results for the students they serve. Professional learning communities operate under the assumption that the key to improve learning for students is continuous job embedded learning for educators. Why does forming PLCs make the most sense? Well, we have to then take responsibility for reflecting when we do it this way. So we could just have constant sessions where we go in like our Trojan time and learn from an expert. But in the way that we have set up our collaborative learning teams, I feel like we get more of a chance to really reflect on what we've done in the classroom and talk about it. The best practices that work for each content area are the ones that can be honed in on and improvements can be made when we need to. Specific learning opportunities can be added to the sessions when needed. And then finally, we don't have time to waste. I think we could all say amen to that one, right? No time to be wasteful. So I want to kind of land on bullet three for just a minute. Is there anything that uh, Britt, Dr. Baker, our instructional coach, could bring into us? Because I did have a conversation with her yesterday, and she said that she is going to be in more of the meetings in the future, and if there's something that we can kind of call on her for, we need to let her know that soon. Is there any specific needs that we have? Can y'all think of anything at all? Not everyone at once. Master Connect, we were talking about earlier, right? We need to, I need to understand the Master Connect program a little bit better than it's been presented to us. Right. Uh, there are things in there that we need to be using that are not. Anything else? And so that allows for specific needs that our group has that every group might not have. So we don't waste time in Trojan time doing something that only a few people need. So I think that's one reason PLCs are important too. Professional learning communities being the collab, we say it as a collaborative, what do we call planning teams here, um, common planning teams. So it's the same thing as this PLC approach. Maybe so she could uh, give us some strategies to provide remediation, individualized remediation after we take a benchmark or a significant assessment. Gotcha. So just some classroom teaching strategies overall. Yeah. We'll let her know that because I think that she wants to come in and be helpful and not just be in the room. Yeah. She said that that's going to have to happen more. Okay. So mutual respect for all stakeholders is key in our groups and I think after a year we have been able to work some of those details out but commonality in our teaching is not always necessary we don't have to all teach the same way we have different strategies that work for us that work for our students all members need to contribute to the goals set forth by administration and that's where the administration coming in will be helpful um, if disagreements occur be willing to table these topics until research can be obtained and support the best options do not simply rely on opinions. I think that's pretty important too. 
And I put here time to talk about this point and add to it. Are there some other things that mutual respect for one another? I almost feel like we could go out and help some teams get started because we've worked through this over the past year. So what are some things that we've had to kind of work through? Maybe just talk to each other amongst yourselves. You don't have to tell me, but y'all can talk about it real quick. Is that good? How's our team going? Just kind of like a reflection. How do you think our team's going? Are we wasting time? Just any of those kind of things. And make notes of it. Um, I can't say names, but if you will make notes of it, I would appreciate it. Our secretary that normally does. I'll say Miss Kate. Overall, I mean, I think we've done pretty good. Um, coming together to, you know, figure out what we need to do planning-wise and making assessments. Um, maybe something we could all improve on is um, looking through the, uh, our standards and having a better understanding of the types of questions our students are going to be asked on their final exam. One of the things on spiral review, the kids who did the, the math part of it, that, that they didn't understand what the word preserve meant. They didn't understand what uh, we hadn't got to reflecting onto itself yet because we are traveling as fast as we can. <laughs> and so I didn't think this part was supposed to end until after fall break, a couple weeks after. So. Anything else? Feel like it's going pretty good this year? Better than last year? Do y'all feel as stressed as we did last year to get common assessments done? It's not. Nice I feel like last year was kind of hectic in getting yeah. everything together, but we laid the groundwork last year. Yeah. And I was kind of refining things. <clears throat> and then here's a big key. Collaboration cannot stop the minute we leave the meeting. Working together to build shared knowledge on the best way to achieve goals and meet the needs of clients is exactly what professionals in any field are expected to do, whether it is curing a patient, winning a lawsuit, or helping all students learn. Members of a professional learning community are expected to work and learn together. So I like the connection there to other professions. I feel like we're not always treated like other professionals, but we should realize that we are and act in such a manner. And working together is, is key. You know, doctors collaborate and lawyers collaborate, so we need to do the same thing. Student success is the overall purpose for creating our professional learning teams. And that's one thing we've already alluded to in our conversation. Trying to help students be successful on those common assessments and benchmarks. A cycle that should be taking place. This is kind of where the end goal comes, and we're going to have to do some of this after fall break again but one gathering the evidence of current levels of students learning that's coming through mastery connect to us i guess most um, readily available anyway and then two developing strategies for new learning learning to occur implementing these strategies in all classes to whatever degree that students can handle so we can't all do it exactly the same because we have different levels of students but differentiating as you were mentioning to get in different strategies that will reach those students who are behind or who need extra because they may want to push ahead. So we have both of those ends of the spectrum for our honors groups. We need to be challenging those to push into higher, deeper concepts as well. Use the common assessments that your team has agreed on in advance. And then five, analyze the data obtained from these common assessments to determine the effectiveness of the strategies. And lastly, adjust the strategy before beginning the next cycle. So if something's not working, don't keep doing it, right? But if it's working, keep doing it. So that's kind of that whole process. And then the cycle just begins over again. All right, so analyzing data. How are we going to analyze our data? This is something we probably need to discuss a little bit before we come back from fall break because I've been told that that day will be dedicated to looking at benchmark results and deciding what things we're still deficient in and need to move move forward. So how do we want to analyze it? How do we want to look at it? And they may tell us how we have to, but just a few things here. We could do the item analysis, which I feel like we've done some in the past. 
um, or we could look at different ability level proficiencies based on IEP students, general, and honors population. How are we going to get those honor students who aren't quite reaching a four up to that level? Because um, we need to kind of focus on that as well and not just settle. And then are there any others that y'all can think of where we can analyze data in a certain way? I was thinking with the second one you would really just kind of group, look at your groups of students and how they did on a particular assessment and whether or not we need to differentiate their teaching or even the assessment in the future for those students. But any comments on that from all the experts in the room? How do you think analyzing the data, in what way would be efficient and at the same time um, helpful, I guess? Not just to push through it, just as something to check off our list, but actually something that will help. Because I don't want to waste time, like one of those other slides said. We don't have to waste. So maybe we just think about that, Kathy, any ideas? Well, for me, I want to know how to get a student from one level up to the next, no matter what level they're at. So if they're a good student, I want to get them up one more. If they're right. IEP student, mm -hmm. I want to help them get somewhere up the ladder. And I feel like the IEP students really give up really quick <laughs> and don't put in time that they need to to come up some. So motivation mm -hmm. and maybe just even playing on that positive, trying to stay positive with them and give them the courage and mm -hmm. the confidence is what I find sometimes. Yes. They, they, they don't have the confidence. confidence. Uh -huh. they, they think they can and they quit before they ever start. Yeah. So trying to figure out a way to help them become confident and differentiation is going to be key in all that, I think. Scaffolding the assignments and y'all do a great job of that, but every year there's new challenges, right? So always to learn from. Anything else? We need to decide who's going to organize data when it does come back because that's one thing that's not been happening for us is organizing data. We need to somehow, either just looking at the Mastery Connects together or something. We need to be organizing it and looking at it as a group. Well, I, I like just the Mastery Connect because like a lot of it's already Connect. done for us. And yes. Then we can, and that's the question. And we can just pull them up anyway. and look at those item analysis that were up there earlier. So that would be probably one of the best ways to do it. The item now saying? that we know more, thank you. Now that we know more about um, Mastery Connect, I think that will be a lot easier to do in the future. So, thank you all for your input there. The goal is not to simply implement something new, but to create an atmosphere where trying something new is viewed as part of the day-to-day -day workings of the school. So, trying it out, getting things done. We're not surgeons. Nothing's going to happen if we fail one day. We can always fix it the next, right? So, I think that teaching is beautiful in that way. There's, you're not going to completely destroy them for life if you tell them, one technique that doesn't quite work, you try the next technique. And, and new programs, even on the computer, are great to try out. So that's it for, I think, everything. I have a little survey that I would like for y'all to do, but I'll send it to you in an email if you don't mind, because we're bad at time. So, thank you. You're welcome.